In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called finding half-life and rate constant from a graph of concentration versus time. This problem might look pretty intimidating, but it's actually pretty straightforward. We have a graph, a chemical reaction, which we're gonna ignore. We have a graph that we're gonna pay attention to, and we just have three questions to answer about the data in this graph. The first question is asking us, what is the half-life of the reaction? And to get the half-life, what we're gonna do is read the starting concentration of our substance of our on our graph for mine that starting concentration is one molar that's my initial concentration the half-life is the amount of time that it takes for this initial concentration to be divided in half one divided in half is going to be 0.5 so that is where my concentration has been divided in half and again what I want is is the time that corresponds with the concentration being decreased in half. So how long did it take for my concentration to drop down to 0.5? I'm just gonna read that time from the graph right here. Uh, and on this Alex problem, when you're hovering your cursor over in this area, some grid lines are gonna appear that will make it even easier for you to read this, uh, read the data from the graph. So that time right there, that is my half-life. My half-life is 0 0.02 seconds. And that is the answer to the first question. What is the half-life to two significant digits? That is 0 0.02 zero seconds to two sig figs. Now, the second question is asking us to calculate the rate constant, and the problem is telling us that we should assume that the reaction is first order. Uh, the way that we answer this question, calculating the rate constant, depends on the order of the reaction, first order, second order, zero order. I looked at quite a few versions of this problem, and every one of them said first order, so my assumption is that that's what they're all going to say. And for a first order reaction, the half-life is equal to 0.693 over k. Now, if for some reason you don't have a first order reaction, for, if for some reason it's telling you second order or some other order, you need to go look up the equations that give you the ability to calculate the rate constant uh, from the half-life data for different orders of reactions. Um, but again, I'm pretty confident that they are all first order because that's all that I saw. And what we're gonna do is just plug in our, uh, ooh, I gotta rearrange this, we're solving for K. K is 0.693 divided by the half-life, 0.693 divided by my half-life, which is 0 0.02 seconds. And notice that you do have to include your units in this. So units are gonna be second to the minus one. I've got a calculator off on the side here. I'm gonna do the math really quick on that. My half-life is 30, or sorry, my rate constant is 34.65 seconds to the minus one. Uh, to two significant figures, that's gonna be, oh man, my cat is bumping into me, 35 second to the negative one. Now, the last question is asking us to calculate the concentration after a certain amount of time has passed. And um, again, that the equation that we use to do this calculation depends on the order of the reaction, uh, which uh, my problem is a first order reaction. And in fact, all of them that I saw were first order reactions. So I'm gonna assume that they're all first order. Um, it is possible that maybe you have a second order reaction in which case you should look up the correct integrated rate law. But like I said, I don't think that that's what you're going to see. So that's this is the integrated rate law, and this is the equation that we'll use to answer this last question. The concentration of A at time T, that's what this problem is asking us to figure out. The rate constant K, we just solved for. The time is the time that was given to us in the problem. And the initial concentration of A, that is from our graph, the initial concentration of A. For mine, that initial concentration is one molar. So I'm going to plug in what I can. My rate constant, negative 35 seconds to the minus one. Um, or sorry, my rate constant is positive 35, but I've got that negative sign in front that I want to include. My time is 0 0.160 seconds. And from my graph, my initial concentration was one. So I'm just gonna do the math. Um, 35, negative 35 times 0 
one six zero is negative five point six and the natural log of one is just zero so to solve for the concentration of a at time t the equation that we use for that or the operation that we use for that is we take e to the negative 5.6 um, and that is oops i hit a button wrong e to the negative 5.6 I get 0 0.003698, and it wants that to two sig figs, so that's just going to be 3.7 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3. That, and that's all there is to it. Now, again, if for some reason you got a different order of reaction, for example, if you got a first or, or excuse me, a second order reaction, which I don't think is likely, you would want to make sure that you use the correct half-life equation and use the correct integrated rate law. Um, but pretty sure that they're all first order.